everyone and welcome to day three of the forum. It's the final day, so don't forget to visit all the zones to rise high on the leaderboard and win exciting goodies. Let's get right into the wonderful session we have in store. Good afternoon, friends. This last two and a half days has been amazing with us and thank you for your continuous support. We have amazing turnaround in this platform, wherein not only people who are visiting this platform to experience what we have bringing in for the future. It also has an opportunity and we've been very, very proud and enjoying the success in the business transaction. Now coming back to today's theme of what I'm going to talk about and how does it relate to our meaningful tomorrow theme. It's go back, it goes back to three years you know, down the line wherein uh, we were discussing that how we can add more value to our business. How do we can create more opportunity for our brand, for our business partners? How do we add and address the new uh, demand of the customer? How we can be more aspirational? How we can be more meaningful to a different set of customer than the regular day-to-day -day customer who walks into our store? And that's where the opportunity we could see is the designer collaboration. This is the first time a global brand collaborating with global designer. That was a thought which we began. I still remember there was a discussion in our previous office uh, wherein Sachin and there was, I see, could I could see a, from outside, you know, a group of research companies suggesting different designer that, okay, we should do this, we should do that. And, uh, you know, this, uh, talking about different profile of designer. And uh, their uh, name popped up, which was very familiar to my ears. And, and I said, okay, I know this guy. Then after all this meeting, all the research companies, they went back. I went to Sachin, Sachin, please don't bother about this person whom we are talking because I have the privilege and honor to grow up with him. And he's no, none other than Bibhu Mahapatra. Uh, let me do a little bit formal introduction of Bibhu. I'm sure people in the design and the fashion industry is, they're familiar uh, about Bibhu, they know about Bibhu. Uh, the early age when I grew up with Bibu, I've seen his fascination towards fabric and design. I think that's what he carried all his life. In 1996, uh, Bibu graduated from Utah State University. He did a master in economics. I think there is a rare breed of designer who has a commercial sense. He did his master in economics and then moved to FIT to do his designing studies out there. He's been working from his early age and I know him how passionate he is about design and how he used to do many small things at his, uh, at his home. And now he has taken this country name to a different level altogether. In 2009, Bibu launched his own brand. Uh, his name Bibu Mahapatra. And his product is available in all the leading stores in Northern America, Europe, Russia, and Middle East. And he's been putting his clothes and been worn by all the celebrity across uh, across the globe, starting from uh, Jennifer Lopez, Hilary Song, and many more to, uh, to add on. Uh, but the defining moment in Bibu's life, I think Bibu was the best person to think about when the first lady, uh, then first lady, uh, Michelle Obama, was his. Uh, I think uh, probably in many occasions, Bibu has been uh, you been fortunate to put uh, his uh, you know clothes on, uh, and who's. Uh, uh, Michelle Obama has been using his clothes, so it's a defining moment. Without delaying further, let me welcome Bibu uh, to this platform. Welcome, Bibu. Hi, Amel. Hey, Bibu. How, how are you, Bibu? What a moment in I'm, life, my I'm life. I'm very well. I'm and very I'm well. Really, really I'm. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, Excited, and I'm uh, marveling at uh, at uh, at this setup that we are actually communicating uh, like this. And uh, and and I've been I've been watching all the sessions of this forum and uh, what you guys have created there. Um, you, Sachin, Toranj, and the, your entire team. It's quite spectacular, and um, and I'm very very thrilled to be here. And thank you for that lovely and uh, super biased introduction that you just <laughs> <gave>. <laughs> uh, that's from my heart Bibu. i must say that you don't only 
not only bring pride to this whole family, I think for the state you come from and for this country, Bibu. And I'm really honored that I come from the same place and we share the probably the same bloodline, I would proudly say that. We and do. it's a great honor. And we what do. an exciting moment. And, and, and welcome to Forever Mark Forum, Virtual Forum 2020, Bibu. Uh, although I know a lot about you, but the audience out here are very curious to know about your history. How have you started um, your journey? If you can tell light about yourself. Yeah. Sure. So as you as you touched on a little bit, um, you know, we we both had the opportunity and privilege of growing up in a state like Odessa, you know, uh, and uh, in and around Kela, where both our lives started and um, and and our loving families. And um, I can say I had a very happy childhood and it's so important to have that and have that uh, memories uh, to sort of support you. But it was not just the childhood, it was it was what the, the things that little things that we took for granted, remember, um, you know, whether it's, it's the arts and craft, the textiles, the, the, the textures, the temples, uh, the, the silver filigree jewelry, food, uh, uh, the language, the uh, literature, the films, the music, all of these things that are unique to our state uh, sort of stayed and made all of us. And uh, for me, um, in addition to that, I also had um, incredible support uh, from my parents and my family and, and my loved ones. Uh, that includes your family and especially your mother. Um, who uh, is one of my favorite people in this whole wide world. Um, but it was it was more about the value system that was sort of instilled at a, at a young age. And uh, something that I lean on now more than ever. Uh, what is it that that uh, that defines who I am today? And uh, what is it that how should I chart my path forward? So because I had that clarity, uh, now I have that clarity, and I, I'm sure of things that I learned uh, as a child and the value system that was given to me is really handy now. And I always had, I was very lucky that I um, had the support system that encouraged me to pursue my dreams and passions. And um, I remember a, a, a one vivid memory. Um, I think I've shared this with you, um, a red, cotton fabric bundle that my mother always had and but she never shared it with me what it was and so after asking and nagging with uh, her for a long time she's like okay let me show you so she pulls out the bundle and opens it on the bed and there um, were a bunch of family jewelry that some of them are mangled up and broken and some are silver some are gold with some semi precious stones and those are our family heirloom jewelry. And my mother inherited those from her um, mother-in-law. So, and she got it from hers. So, and she said, these are jewelry from all the women in our family. And, and they tell a unique story about the women in our family. So there you have it. And that was a very, very, very significant moment. And that's when the initial seed of, of of the power of fine jewelry, how they can be heirloom and how they can really tell stories uh, of generations, really, and that power um, the fine jewelry have. And that sort of stayed with me until we all met, you and Sachin and your team, um, casually over coffee and uh, Talking about how to collaborate with uh, Forever Mark, and uh, and uh, the result was Artemis, and um, Artemis was born, and um, you know that sort of that's all that I do today is directly linked to things that I experienced, learned in Odisha, in Raurkela, uh, uh, as a part of my childhood and my heritage, really. Thank you. Thank and, you. Um, we would tell me, yeah, if you can tell me about a little bit about uh, as a designer, uh, how do you approach design? And knowing that you are a master in economics, what comes first, the design or the commerce? 
I think I think I always say this. Um, design can exist uh, separately, and commerce can exist separately. But the key is when you try to bring them together, you always have to strike that balance of creativity and commerce, and um, and um, you have to have the satisfaction of creating something unique that is um, that is. Um, challenges you creatively, but also at the same time, you have to, if you're building a fashion business, uh, um, a creative business, you have to make sure that it's commercial viability always measured and checked. And so, um, time, I, I always wanted to study fashion. My mother taught me how to, uh, how to sew and I would cut up things and make things. Uh, however, um, I'd never had an opportunity to pursue fashion as a, uh, uh, as a study. So I, uh, I continued economics and I came to US on a, on a scholarship to do my econ major. And that's when I sort of um, realized that, okay, I can actually go to FIT and study fashion. And, um, but my education in economics always stayed uh, with me, and it's a big support system to create that balance of creativity um, and commerce. And it came in very handy when I started my namesake brand, uh, Bibu uh, Mahapatra, in 2009. And that became uh, a real turning point. And that was my long, long standing dream and a goal. And um, that's after I put in 10 years uh, of working for, uh, uh, for different companies. Um, uh, one being Jamie Mendel. And uh, that sort of allowed me to sort of really having those jobs and being trained under someone else, under someone else's resources, allowed me to sort of finesse my skills and understand the business acumen uh, behind a luxury fashion business. Um, you know, with a lot of support from friends and family and uh, um, in my community, uh, I started my uh, namesake brand, and that sort of, um, it's been a very interesting journey, and uh, it allowed um, me to connect with a lot of people, and uh, allowed me to sort of learn about different communities, different cultures, and all the, all the different sectors that come together to create a collection, you know. And we do, now we do three collections a year, and um, we show during uh, New York Fashion Week, and we also show uh, in Paris, and we sell uh, globally. And uh, and to me, it's an opportunity to to, to really create something unique that speaks um, to my core, but also connect with the worldwide audience. And um, we grew the business uh, over the last ten years, and uh, and uh, really introduce the collection uh, to different audience and also in the last 10 years we focused on a lot of collaborations and one of my most prized uh, collaboration is with Forever Mark and when we launched Artemis in 2016 and uh, it has been nothing but a beautiful journey of education learning about uh, the craft of fine jewelry and learning about um, uh, diamonds and, and forever mark diamonds and what makes a diamond really unique and rare and how uh, and its legacy and understanding its real value and how to see a fine diamond how to sort of how to sort of um, understand how to sort of set it apart so uh, I'm really grateful to forever mark uh, um, and its team to sort of hold my hand through this journey and uh, one of the highlights, I would say, in during this uh, last 10 years of journeying and building my brand and building a lifestyle brand, and uh, the formulas change. Um, uh, what was the what was working yesterday is not working today. Uh, so you always have to be um, alive and uh, be uh, connected with with your surroundings. Um, in the process, I met a lot of interesting people, which I'm really grateful to, whether it's the artists, whether it's uh, actors, whether it's writers, or individuals like, um, um, you know, President Obama and Michelle Obama. And 
um, I'm influenced by them. I, every time I collaborate with someone, I I take a little bit of their value and I make it my own and I learn from them. And I'm really um, grateful to, for that. And what I understood from the Obamas is, is it's important to pay attention to dreamers. It's important to um, understand the value of equality, value of justice and tolerance and how to sort of encourage our new generation to carry these values with them. Um, in the last 10 years also, I have uh, been fortunate enough to work on a textile revival project in uh, Odisha, as you, you were aware of, uh, Amit, uh, uh, Odisha uh, uh, textiles, the Ikat and the Sambalpuri Ikat and all different clusters of weavers um, in Odisha that uh, contribute this incredible legacy. But unfortunately, uh, over the last few decades, um, it's been very challenging for them. And so I've been involved in creating, um, in working with these uh, communities to create some uh, designs uh, with them. It's been really, really interesting for me. Again, I'm very privileged to have that. Um, also, um, um, it's, it's been a decade of building the brand, building, uh, having these collaborations and learning about myself, learning about um, what the future of my brand is. But it has been a mixture of ups and downs and every day you uh, you learn something new. Some some formulas work, some formulas don't work. And uh, and uh, I would say it's, it's true when people say you learn more from your mistakes than your successes. So that has been my case. Um, I take incredibly, um, I take a, a lot of pride in what I do, but I also know that without a lot of support from my community, all the artisans that work um, uh, on my textiles or my uh, uh, or my designs who make it a reality, without them, I don't exist. My brand doesn't exist. So, um, you know, it's, it's it's been quite a journey, really. Um, and then um, I was, it was March 20, uh, 2020, I was on a flight um, from London and I arrived at uh, JFK airport and I picked up my phone and I hear that America is closing all its uh, flights from Europe because of COVID. So there we are, you know, we're entering, we all as, as uh, humans globally, we were sort of going into a phase of our lives that we will never forget. And um, a, a phase that really tests us who we are as human beings. And um, we, were, I had a meeting with my team and we finished um, a lot of our uh, uh, obligations uh, that we had on our hands and on March I believe March 19th, we closed our showroom and um, everyone went home because uh, as we were advised by the authorities here, New York City was going through a really tough time and they were warning that we, we cannot, we basically lockdown happened. So I was fortunate enough to spend a lot of time upstate New York where I have a little uh, house uh, in a farming communities and I've been raising chickens and guinea hens and uh, gardening. Um, I have to say it was very tough for a few uh, few weeks and I was desperately trying to stay in touch with my team members and uh, talking about this new reality and uh, we were all hoping that it will all end in a few weeks and we can all go back to normalcy. But that was not the case as we all know and, uh, and we are still going through the whole situation and uh, but it allowed me to sort of think on my past and uh, reflect on uh, past 10 years really and uh, mistakes I've made and uh, how to sort of how to sort of go forward and, and uh, I have stayed in touch with my family and friends my clients uh, people that I have lost in, uh, contact over the years um, but one of the things that I saw in the middle of the lockdown and pandemic that I realized these kind of uh, um, moments really bring out the best and the worst in all of us. And 
you know, whether it's Brianna Taylor or, uh, um, you know, um, uh, people, people die in the hands of uh, authorities who are supposed to uh, protect us, you know. So uh, George Floyd event happened and this movement happens uh, called Black Lives Matter. And uh, all of a sudden that ignites a force that moves people not only in this country, but globally. And this is something not new. It's been happening and uh, in all over, but this time it was real. The contrast was out there. The good versus evil was sort of out of balance. And uh, we all started coming to terms with the harsh realities of racism and bigotry and systemic uh, injustice all around the globe. And uh, we have gotten numb to it. So that movement sort of forced her to stand in solidarity with uh, voices that uh, call these issues out. And it's not an American issue. It's a global issue. Injust injustices happen everywhere, in every household. Uh, we just have to... We just have to acknowledge it. And everything that we see... If we see something wrong, we have to... So during this months of lockdown and uh, introspection and thinking, I have thought about my life. I've thought about my brand, my work. But mostly I thought about what kind of a person I am and how do I define myself? What's my little legacy is going to say about me? Am I really going to make a difference in one person's life? Uh, um, so, you know, I don't know these are big words for me. Um, I'm, I'm making a personal pledge to do my bit, to educate, to encourage um, people to start against, stand against uh, inequality and injustice, no matter where they are. That's, that's my goal. And, uh, and education is the key, uh, I think. And uh, sure, uh, we are in a moment now, there is a momentum called Black Lives Matter or, or, or Women's Rights. But it's nothing new. It's been around. And I think more and more people realize how important it is, which is a good thing. Um, but I think it's the it's, it goes to really doing our bit, our little bit of um, and the oath of practicing what you preach is really key and uh, and and really standing up for who we could be and with uh, unity and solidarity and um, equality and inclusivity, really. Um, I look back at my history of, uh, uh, of my team members for the last 10 years, and I am proud to say that I have always had a very inclusive, very diverse group of people to collaborate with. And uh, I don't see color. I mean, of course, I see color. I'm a designer, but I don't see color. I don't see race. I see, I see people and their values. But I also see if there is injustice, if someone's not playing by the fair rules, I call them out. Sometimes I get into trouble for that. But um, that brings us to where we go from here. You know, um, New York was the worst, it was the epicenter of COVID crisis. But uh, luckily, we turned this around, we bent the curve. And uh, the governor said we could soft reopen from June 22nd. So we came back uh, to the studio and um, I have been sort of doing a lot of things with my little camera running around uh, in the woods or in the cornfields and uh, uh, with my friends and my family and filming, you know, telling their stories and recording their stories and telling my stories and really sort of find a way to sort of tell an authentic story with my craft. And it's about going back to nature. It's about respecting nature. It's about respecting um, uh, human values and telling the story of the roots of everything that I do. And it doesn't start with me. It starts with, with an artisan somewhere, whether it's in India or in Lake Como or uh, in, uh, in some parts of Asia. So. Um, so I've been thinking about what is the new normal and what is the new world that we are going to enter into. The old archaic system is was not working 
even pre-COVID. So now it has basically shut. So we all have to sort of learn and educate. And it's my responsibility to educate my audience why they should look at a product and how they should look at and what are the questions they should ask when they're looking at a, a luxury uh, piece of I luxury item, whether it's a piece of clothing or a fine jewelry, and what's what are the ethos behind it? Um, I think I think we have we have sort of we have been focusing on our audience directly. They they could be anywhere, any part of the world, and they connect with us through social media, through uh, uh, through emails, through Facebook, through Instagram, uh, through TikTok. Um, but it's always about that connectivity. That's the most important thing that we have. And luckily, with, with the help of uh, technology, we can do that. We can talk about nature. We can talk about our work. We can talk about, uh, uh, tell our story, really. And, um, um, and in the process, I have, I have pledged that I will talk about every artisan that comes into the picture, every artisan that contributes to my work um, and to be conscious about the creation of of products because we have been producing mindless amount of um, amount of designs and clothing and uh, and the fast fashion which has its meaning because it's affordability before because of its uh, uh, dynamic nature but clothes don't have to last only for a moment i did i dream and I always try to make clothes that have a longevity and it is more important today than ever to have clothes that can last a long time well past beyond a season um, reduce waste not uh, you know that mindless consumption that we used to do that has to stop as well um, the process has to be environmentally conscious uh, uh, ethical and sustainable and uh, and these are big words it used to be big words but now everyone is forced to adapt to those and that's the only way we can stand up and uh, we have to educate and encourage our consumer about um, um all of these and and sort of train them why they should look at a product in uh, what with what lens really and how to question it and understand where their that piece of clothing or fine jewelry or that piece of diamond where it comes from. And I know that Forever Mark as a, as a brand has always prided themselves about telling the story behind a, a, a piece of diamond and, and the craft the, where it comes from. Um, this pandemic given sort of a new platform of opportunities uh, during Fashion Week or any time a digital platform where we can present whenever we want to present uh, if we have a new product. Um, I think consumer is much more trained now to go to the source directly and find out what is this new product about. And uh, more collaborations that I think is going to happen between brands and this, which will give rise to sort of more meaningful uh, um, products as well. Um, also, I'm looking forward to uh, a project that um, um, I talked about my Odisha textile revival project. A new phase is going to be launched uh, uh, in the uh, next year, I believe, which I'm looking forward to, to work with uh, artisans and weaving community as in Odisha. Um, and also, um, as proposed by the government of Odisha, we would be working on a uh, Odisha Institute of Craft, where we can give a platform to the uh, the native artisans and also bring in artisans from other parts of the world as an exchange program, and um, which is something I, I look forward to because it is it is all about these future students and these dreamers and how to educate them and uh, prepare them for a new paradigm, really. And uh, lastly, I pledge that I will continue to work with these students and and these artisans all over the world um, in the art in the area of art and design um, to take them to that new horizon and to prepare them as much as I can with my experience 
um, and uh, to make sure that they are ready for a meaningful tomorrow. We will now begin the Q&A session with the speakers. Minimize the full screen and drop in your questions by clicking on the Q&A icon and our speakers will address them. Hey, Bibu, thank you so much for this wonderful insight. It's quite inspiring. Every time I hear you, I get more inspired. And I'm sure, like me, me there are many others in this country and this world who whoever is listening to you will always get inspired. Uh, there are a series you. of questions coming in for you, Bibu. Uh, please excuse okay. me if I don't read it in, in sequence, uh, all the audience. Uh, but whoever's question, I'm not able to answer. But after this session, I will make sure that Bibu and we at Forever Mark will answer jointly and get back to you. Uh, so there is a question about, uh, tell us a bit about your journey to start Bibu Namesake Label. How did you, you know, conceptualize it? What made you think that you have to start your own label? Um, this is something I always tell young students that um, after school, you really have to polish your skills. Doesn't matter what area you're in, uh, experience counts for a lot. And, and if you can learn um, under someone and uh, learn um, their techniques, but also at the same time, uh, polish your own technique and really you discover a lot about yourself. Um, you know, something that school doesn't or college doesn't teach you. College gives you the practical knowledge and tools. But when you really work with, uh, for someone, with someone, you really learn. And I did that. I paid my dues um, for nine years and uh, with always a goal of starting something of my own. I didn't know how to, how to make it work. Um, and uh, I knew that this business, the fashion, luxury fashion business is a very, very difficult business. And... You have to have, believe in yourself, you have to have that rigor to really not ever give up. You always have to move forward and always have to stay true to yourself. Um, so after nine years, uh, I, with a lot of encouragement and a lot of push from my friends and family, I resigned from that job and I rented a little white thinking box, I call it, a little white room, uh, a studio space near my house here on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Um, I would just go in there and sit and think and sort of get a pen and paper and start doodling. And um, that gave me a, uh, a few months of clarity, a few months of sort of meditation, you can say. Uh, I had to sort of cleanse my experience and then, um, then sort of starting a new phase, kind of like the time that we are in now. You know, we have all these experiences, but now we are questioning all of that. So... So I was turning a new page and I started my brand in 2009 with Fall 2009 collection. Um, the only uh, issue was the recession was there. And so everyone asked me, like, why are you starting a luxury brand right now? Um, and, and for me, that's when, again, my, my, uh, my little um, experience with uh, economics came into handy that because no one was launching anything, anything luxury and nothing new. And so... When I launched something very carefully, everyone came to see it. Every single retailer, every single major retailer came to see the collection. So everyone knew and everyone wrote about it. Only one store bought it, the first collection, which was good <laughs> enough because I didn't have any, any means to produce it, right? So uh, I just had one store write an order, but the whole world come to see it, came to see it. So um, that was good. And... Um, Trust me, I'm still learning, and uh, every day I learn um, from my mistakes and from uh, some of the successes. Amazing, Bibu. But every journey starts with a small step. I think that first tour matters to you a lot. Uh, right. Now, the next question is, uh, how did you manage the cultural shift from India to U.S., Bibu? Oh, um, you know, uh, my brother was... Um, who's an artist, uh, who you know, um, uh, Amit, and uh, he came to America to uh, 
uh, go to art school. And after he came here, and he also suggested if you want to study fashion, you should come to America. Um, I didn't, I mean, sure, I read about America in the history books, but but that's different from when you, when you leave home. I had never left home uh, for 24 years. I'd never seen an airplane event. That's the first time I got an airplane. <laughs> so, um, you know, there was a lot of change, like a lot of new things happening and uh, arriving in America and it's a new smell, new sense, new, um, everything was new. Um, but it was, you know, it was a, again a major learning process and I had to sort of learn pretty fast because I was starting school in a few months and uh, my cousin Sarita, who uh, lived in Utah then, sort of helped me to, to sort of get into this culture and understand uh, uh, some of the, gave me some sort of uh, social tools to sort of carry myself and how to communicate with my major professor or, or my classmates. And so um, it was an exciting time, but I also made mistakes every day. I wouldn't know how to sort of have a conversation or sometimes I simply couldn't understand the accent and I would make some silly <laughs> mistakes always. Um, but I think it's important to mention that after I left home, left India, all those influences that we talked about in the beginning from my childhood, the, the sense of color, the, uh, the beauty all around that, everything became very vivid. And I always say my heritage runs in my veins. Although I, I, I'm, I love to travel and I, I love to soak up different cultures and I'm comfortable, you can throw me in any place, I'll, I will find my way. But um, India stays pretty close. My, my heritage stays pretty close, and it always will be. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing, Bibu. Uh, there is a question from somebody called Viswas. How do you plan to work with the viewers from Orissa? You touched upon those points. If you can answer his question. Sure. Um, um, we're working with, uh, with a little bit of guidance uh, from Orissa government, but also we are planning to work with Sambalpur Vastrala to, to help us market these designs. So um, I think the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the textile um, and handloom uh, department has sort of um, uh, come up with this project that is a bigger scale. And uh, during, with that process, once I'm formally on board, if I am on board, uh, uh, um, if I'm selected, um, I do get to work with all different uh, weaving uh, clusters all over Odisha, uh, hopefully, and creating, giving them challenges with uh, my designs and work hand in hand with them. But that's the creative side of it. But one of the major focus, my goal is to make sure that the, the transactions are done more transparent. Um, each of these uh, weavers and weaving clusters have the infrastructure to to make things easier for them because if they, if we don't make a change in their lives we cannot sort of, uh, revive this craft it'll, it'll, it'll just uh, go away so we need to take care of the weavers first we challenge them we we encourage them but we also have to give them make sure that their basic necessities basic needs are met so um you know, it's a, it's a huge task, and I'm only playing a small role, and I will need a lot of support. So, I'll count on all of my supporters in Odisha or all over India or globally. I'll I'll call on them to help us and spread the word once the product is out, and spread the word about the weavers and um, and and the source of where these products will come from. Yeah, I think it has uh, um, amazing uh, uh, weaving technology we have to introduce to the market. I think the what heritage brings in makes us a lot of pride uh, to us. Uh, Ibu, like it's another uh, question which is about sustainability, you know, as in you're into fashion industry. How do you, when you're in the field of fashion, how do you relate yourself to sustainability? Because sustainability is something very close to me and my organization. Uh, we do 
carry out various projects to make sure that we contribute back to the society, back to the environment. But uh, for coming from the fashion industry, what what do you do? You know, because when you talk about fabric, you talk about big fashion shows, uh, wherein you use a lot of uh, energies and everything. So what do you do actually out there to make sure that you contribute back uh, uh, into sustainability? Absolutely. I, I think there is... Uh... There, there is a lot of work that has to be done, but it, I think it's, it starts within and our habits and our consumption patterns. Um, you know, like I was saying, like, why do we need so many things every season? Why can we not uh, invest in pieces that will have a longevity, that will take us to a, uh, through many seasons, many years? Um, I think that's something anyone can do and anyone can practice. And uh, mindful consumption starts with the consumer. And uh, for me as a designer, as a brand, I'm in, I, I'm in the grid, I'm in the system, and I am very much um, guilty of the fact that I'm a part of the grid and I consume that power when I do a, a fashion show and I um, um, you know, all those lights and all those, uh, we don't use a lot of sets, we reuse a lot of things, but within that still there is a lot of, lot of um, energy we consume. Um, so now it's, it's the time how to, sort of, how to sort of question all those norms. Same thing with te using textiles, what sort of dyes they're using. I cannot make those changes, even though I realize it, I, I cannot make those changes overnight. And I I know no one is expecting me to, but I have been taking little steps to take my brand more towards in the sustainable and mindful operation area. How? Um, last three years, I've been collaborating with uh, the ISA Foundation, which is Sadhguru's uh, founded. When he was visiting uh, New York a few years ago, he uh, uh, met with me and he requested that I should start with at least two styles of my 80 style collection that are sourced with uh, organic materials. And uh, I was so curious and they sent me all these beautiful materials and I started making two pieces. And guess what? Now we are doing a good section of our collection with that because everyone wants to be a part of it. Everyone want, likes the story of, of organic cotton, how it benefits our environment, how it benefits the organic growers, co uh, cotton and silk growers. Um, and it has authentic story behind it. Uh, we're also, when we came back, when we uh, uh, lockdown ended, when we came back to the studio, we're also, we took out our mood boards, took out our drawings and restarted. And we decided to upcycle and recycle a lot of, lot of things. A lot of the textiles that we have in our textile bin, we sort of brought those out and started reusing them. Sometimes old samples also we cut up so that it starts with small steps and i hope that um by next year we would have made as a brand would have made a lot of progress and uh, towards the direction of sustainability there's a lot of work uh, we, i have to do um, but i know what i have to do yeah great to hear that uh Bibu, i heard you in the power of diamond podcast Okay, uh, it really helped to bring out the perspective on diamond and fashion. Can you throw some light into it? Definitely. I, I think when we talk about longevity, when we talk about things lasting for a long time, if not forever, uh, diamonds have the power of lasting forever. And especially if they are, if they are really defined and if, they're, if they go through a process of... Uh, selection that forever mark puts these diamonds um to be i guess it's less than one percent of world's diamonds they say it is worthy of uh, getting a forever mark stamp um to me that's luxury to me the uh, uh, the the rare crafts that are still existing all around the world will define what luxury is um i think uh, the uniqueness the rare quality of of the craft, of the uh, of the elements that goes into fashion is what's going to define luxury. It's 
going to, it's not going to be the big labels and big logos anymore. I think it's about what goes into each piece, whether it's a fine jewelry or, or, or it's a, a, a fine piece of clothing. Uh, we started collaborating with Forever Mark and uh, we created art. Um, every time we put these jewelry on a show on a, with a collection, the collection comes to life. And um, it's 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 they go hand in hand, and I uh, it it sort of it completes a key process of empowering, and I always aspire my clothes to empower women, and that's what these uh, uh, fine jewelry and diamonds do. And uh, besides that, they become heirloom, and they they tell stories for generations. Thank you, Bibu. My last question to you, Bibu. One advice you okay. want to give to all young fashion designers who are watching you, and uh, what do you see future uh, post-pandemic for them? Um, I think things uh, this as as um, hard and difficult these times may feel. I think. Um, we all, especially the younger generation who are just finishing school or the last stage of school, things are hard for you guys. Um, it's, it's very difficult, but this is also an incredible time where we are seeing, we're witnessing global solidarity, human solidarity globally, actually. That's what I meant to say. And uh, this is the time for us to break every single rule and no one's judging us. Everyone is in this crazy times. So this is the time to be completely crazy and really speak your mind and really define what you are about. Whether you're in uh, fashion design or merchandising or marketing or sales, what is it that defines you? And this pause, this, um, this sort of stretched out time, I feel like time has sort of stretched out for the time being. But this gives us time to really polish our skills and uh, and really understand what are the key elements. Things are not going to be where they are. You know, people may say otherwise. We don't want things to go back to normal that way. I think we need to define what the new normal is. I think we need to uh, really correct our process. We have to think about sustainability. We think about ethical practices. We have to think about how to bring our community together. So as young students, you have to think about what is your goal. And you, you cannot do this alone and you have to bring your community together and you have to believe in yourself. You have to fight for it if you have to. And, and uh, you have to be nice. You have to be nice to people around you and you have to give due credit to artisans who help you help in the process of expressing yourself through your craft but be, um, stay connected with your audience define who your audience is you have all the tools with your phones your social media you have the capacity to communicate try to tell an authentic story in whatever you do Thank you so much, Bibu. Thank you for inspiring us all the time. And it's a pleasure been working with you for the last three, four years in different platform. And it's been a great journey to do all those fashion walk in New York Fashion Week uh, with you, launching Artemis 1 and the, the second version of Artemis, and which is such an inspiring journey for all of us. And I'm really looking forward for 2020 September Fashion Week, maybe virtually this time. Yes. Well, likewise, thank you. Thank you, Amit. Thanks, thanks to Sachin, your entire team. You are like, uh, you guys are like my family. And uh, I learn from you all every single moment we interact. So, um, you know, there is a big new future waiting ahead of us. And I, every day I learn from you and we have a, a long journey. I, I, uh, Sachin and I, we talked about it many times. This is, this is, we're in this for the long haul, 
and um, because it brings out the best in each each of us by collaborating and understanding and that respect I have for you and I thank you all for this incredible forum this platform not for not only for bringing me uh, into this but also uh, the information the encouragement the energy that uh, you have been uh, spreading through this forum for the last uh, three days. So I'm very grateful and I thank you all. Thank you, Bibu. Thank you so much for being you. part of Forever thank Mark 2020 you. Forum. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us. And it's been an amazing journey. We have been going through the last two and a half days uh, of amazing experience through digital platform. And this would have been not possible with without continuous support of our, all our partners across the board. I would like to highlight certain key facts of this uh, before I conclude this forum, certain key facts, which is a very, very encouraging sign for us. In last two and a half days, which is we have been put in into one event. This one event has been viewed in 37 countries, 200, 426 cities, nine 9,243 registration. We had more than 8,652 unique logins and more than 1,19,000 like video views. It's been an amazing journey so far and thank you so much. Like I always say is that this would have been not possible without the contribution of time, energy given by all our business partner. But before I conclude, I want to also highlight the key campaign which we are running uh, in this uh, fourth quarter of the year. We were, I would be running, we would be running possibly the Icon Collection, which is starting from November, December, and it goes till the March. Icon Collection is inspired by Forever Mark Icon. Uh, and that's been exclusively manufactured by six of our manufacturers uh, out there. I would request all our retail partner to engage with them well in advance uh, so that they can take advantage of our season campaign. Can I have the AV, please? As I said, uh, Forever Mark Icon Collection is a new collection from Forever Mark, inspired by the definition and the vision of a modern woman. It has a unique line around more than, around 56 SKUs we have in this collection, and I would urge it has a both bridal and a fashion line, uh, and it's a more sellable, more price point driven, very classic in nature. Uh, and I would also like to play one more AV, which reflects the uh, more bridal part of it. Can I have the AV, please? And the next campaign which we have is the Tribute Collection. Uh, tribute Collection campaign will be starting from September, October, which is a very aggressive. As I said, during this difficult time, we have not cut down on any of our marketing budget. We are going all out and making sure there is a demand, consumer demand, and we aspire consumer to buy a category. Uh, fortunately, uh, we are into the category of business, which is still more meaningful uh, to our customer. Uh, recent research which is done in, during this pandemic time, uh, our end consumer are became, becoming more sensible and they're choosing product or the lifestyle which is more meaningful to them. Uh, what are those meaningful things? It's about the family, it's about the environment, and they want to appreciate all this by celebrating and giving something more meaningful to their family members. And in, when we do that research, and the first thing that comes on the top is the diamond and Forever Mark Diamond is a more meaningful gift to, our, to the end consumer. So 
take the advantage of this season campaign, which we're starting from next month, that is on tribute collection. And from November, December till Jan, Feb, we will have icon collection. So can I have an AV of tribute collection? As you've seen the AV, the tribute collection are the stackable rings. You can buy one ring, two ring and make your own stack. This is purely defining you about the end consumer, how, what they want to bring into their own lifestyle. So before I conclude this forum, I think the platform is available for next one week. Please enjoy this platform. Uh, I would like to quote one of the interesting reading I had in one of my friend's uh, WhatsApp profile today. Uh, so it's, a, it's a from a famous movie called Kung Fu Panda. So here the snake is on the top of the panda and the snake is asking uh, the panda, uh, what is more important? Is the journey more important or the destination? Uh, oh, sorry, I think it's other way around. The panda asked the snake or the wise uh, Shefu, the master, I guess. Uh, the question was like this, you know, which is more important, the journey or the destination? And the master replies, it is the company. So thank you very much for being part of this Forever Mark 2020 forum. Please enjoy this platform. See all the recordings of the uh, prominent speaker we have uh, on the platform. Enjoy the business platform. Visit our all manufacturer booth and keep encouraging us. I would also like to thank the amazing team who has worked behind this platform. Uh, they're all the backend team. They're actually the backbone of our organization who makes these things happen. Thank you so much, everybody, for being with us and supporting us. Enjoy the Forever Mark 2020 Forum, and let's build tomorrow, meaningful tomorrow. Thank you.